asked you to define yourself today, right now, what or who would you say you are? Would you say you're a parent or a spouse? Maybe you tell me you're a developer or an athlete, a movie enthusiast, or since we're in Boulder, a yoga-loving foodie cyclist. <laughs> the funny thing about the way we define ourselves is it's so often built on how we spend our time, where we invest our mental energy, and how that makes each of us unique. Last March, I'd have told you I was a hiker, a dog mom, a classically trained tuba player, an email marketer, a wife, and a pretty decent cook. Those things together painted a clear picture of how I like to spend my time and thus who I was. I also considered myself creative, and I had done well in my high school art class, but I rarely drew anymore, and I never had the time or motivation to create real art, whatever that is. So on Tuesday, March 7th, 2017, I set a goal to make art, whether or not it was real art. I would draw 100 portraits of 100 random Facebook friends in 150 days. One portrait every 1.5 days for five months. I called it the 100 Faces Project. Laura was the first. I closed my eyes and pointed a finger at my screen and to pick her name from the list of Facebook friends, and then I raced through every strand of her long curly hair, defining the rules for my exciting new project as I drew. Number one. I'd export my list of friends, randomizing their names to find the next 99 people. Number two, no skipping anyone on the list, unless they didn't have any photos. Number three, I had to do every portrait in one sitting, so no giving up and starting over. Number four, I'd post and tag each portrait publicly as it was finished. And number five, I had to finish portrait 100 by August 3rd, 149 days later. Had I known then what a delightfully irresponsible, enormous, and frankly creepy commitment I was making when I started, I never would have done it. <laughs> Those first three portraits flew by in a cool 45 minutes each. Um, they weren't perfect, but I knew Laura and Stephen and Bess would be delighted enough by my intent to forgive any shortcomings in my execution. And then I got to John. John, who I'd known for just a few short months in college. John, who I'd chatted with only in passing at the Nissan plant in Tennessee. John, who without question would be terrified to see a hand-drawn portrait of himself posted to Facebook by someone he hadn't spoken to in years. <laughs> I shared it the next day. I wrote that he was nice to work with, and I thought I remembered him being a good skateboarder, and then I crossed my fingers and hoped he wouldn't think I was a stalker or a serial killer or both. <laughs> to my great relief, John responded with grace and gratitude, and I buckled in for 96 more weird portraits of unsuspecting Facebook friends. <laughs> From March through August, I spent all of my time covered in graphite and eraser crumbs. Those first three portraits took 45 minutes each, but almost everyone after took three hours plus, naturally. It was about 300 hours over 150 days, or 60 hours a month, 14 hours a week, two hours a day. At one point, I stopped cooking entirely, and our dogs made friends with the pizza guy. <laughs> I put some serious wear on my single pair of sweatpants. <laughs> I wish I'd saved all my texts that said, Sorry, I can't make it. I have to draw another portrait tonight. But I deleted them to make room for all the photos I was saving as references. Um, so I would say, if you've ever felt creepy for scrolling through your cousin's, boyfriend's, coworker's Facebook photos, well, you probably should, but I can totally relate. <laughs> Despite the long nights and the constant anxiety of sharing something so personal, I kept drawing. And I was surprised again and again by everyone's kindness and enthusiasm. I was especially surprised the first time someone called me an artist. If people cared that I drew glasses crooked or didn't get the smile quite right, nobody ever said as much. Instead, they too joined me in celebrating all of my weird and wonderful friends. Beyond watching my community grow as a result of the project, I also learned a lot about my own identity as well. I learned that to be an artist, all you have to do is start making art. Or to be a cyclist, you ride a bike. Or to be a student of anything, you just study. You don't have to be qualified to explore the things you love or the things that excite you, but you do have to choose to make time for them. Woo! I don't spend two hours every day making art now, but I do carve out time every week to pull out my pens or charcoal or watercolors and practice painting the picture of the kind of person and artist I want to be. I know now that it's all real art. It always has been. <laughs> There's a quote that says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So I encourage you again to consider how you define yourself right now. You didn't become the person you are today by accident. Take a risk, set an intention, and make time for the things you love and the person you want to become. Thank you.